You know, whether you're new to fishing or you've been around the block a while, I think one of the things we all search for is that perfect knot that we can use in almost every fishing situation. Well, I think I've found it. And so today I'm gonna to share with you not only how to tie the knot, but I'm gonna share with you all the uses I came up with for all the different types of fishing scenarios. So stick around. everybody, thanks so much for taking the time to hang out with us today and check out our channel. I'm Dave and welcome to The Frugal Sportsman. You know, if you're new here, I'd really encourage you to take a minute at the end of this video to jump on over to our homepage. We've got lots of DIYs and how-to videos uh, for you to check out that will not only help deepen your outdoor experience, but I think will help save you some money in the process. So with that out of the way, let's jump in today's video and get started tying this knot. Okay, so the knot I'm gonna be sharing with you today is commonly known as the uni knot. Some of you may have used it in one or two scenarios, but I'd like to give you uh, some ideas of how you can use it so that it covers a full range for you. All right, so the first one I'm going to share with you um, is just for attaching a hook, all right? So basically, I'm gonna be using this fly line backing to show you so you can get a better idea of it, all right? So basically you just thread it through the hook like this. And then what I, I like to do is I like to keep the hook in my left hand. I'm right-handed so uh, I keep uh, the line in my right hand. And then what I do is I just bring the line alongside each other like that. Okay, so you can see it there. And then what I do is I just pull it through and I make a single loop like that. You can see it on there. Okay just like that and then I pull these two lines together. Now what I want to do is I just want to take and wrap this tag in through the loop like this. Just wrap it through. Now on heavy pound test line uh, I like to go about five times on smaller I go about seven or eight. So I'm just going to do about four or five wraps here. And that's what it's, it looks like right there. Okay, now I'm just going to pull this like that. And don't worry that it's all the way up here. The hook's all the way back there. You'll see as I pull this down, it wants to slide. And it actually acts like a noose. The more you pull on this, the tighter it gets. And then you can just need to clip this off right here. And there you go, that's the uni knot. It's What I like about this over a clinch knot is a clinch knot you go around and then you bring it back through the loop between the hook and the line and then you pull it tight. But if that slips just in one place, the whole knot comes undone. This has to actually slip through each of the individual turns for this knot to become fully undone. And the more you pull on it, the tighter it gets. So that's the first variation is hook to line. So let's jump on over and I'm going to show you how to snell it onto the same hook. Okay, a couple of things I just want to share with you before I show you how to snell this. And that is, if the eye is straight on a hook like this, I like to come in from the bottom and then snell. And if the hook eye is pointed down, like on a streamer, I come in from the top. And if the eye is up, like on an octopus hook, I come in from the bottom again. And the reason for that is it keeps the line as parallel as it can be with the shank of the hook. And so that's what I want to accomplish. Uh, so <clears throat> let me just do this by, we're just gonna put it through the bottom here like this to snell it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a loop and I'm gonna lay it on top like that. Now what I wanna do is bring this tag in around this line and the shank at the same time and bring it all the way back. So let me give a little more and we'll do that lay it on here just like that and now we're going to wrap this around now if this is a heavy mono like maybe 20 30 pound test I like to go about five wraps um, if it's 
a lighter mono, uh, you know, eight pound or so, I go or less, I go about uh, seven wraps or so. So let's get this over here where it's supposed to be. Now, once it's wrapped like that, you just take a tag in and you pull that right like this. And you can see it tighten up a little bit. Now, if it's got a couple of wraps around the hook, that's, that's normal. I just turn it so it lines up fairly well. Just like that, all right? And now when you pull this, you can see it start to cinch up. And now I grab the tag in and the main line and give it a tug. And that baby is solid on there. So now all we do is we cut the tag in, right like this. There we go. And we're good to go. What's great about this type of a snell using the uni knot is where you can put it directly on the end of the main line. You don't have to create a leader. Some snells you have to snell them and then fish it through and then you have to attach that other end to the main line. So this one uh, allows you to bypass that. You can attach it directly to your main line or you can make up leaders and uh, it's uh, really sturdy. Uh, the one thing I like about it with this is some snell knots if um, like an egg loop knot or a snell or something if that comes loose just that one portion everything can unravel but with this it has to unravel around every one of those wraps that we did and so that's why I prefer this one um, over some of the others okay one of the hardest things to do is to attach a braided line to a mono line and uh, the reason for that is braid is so slick that many of the knots just slide right through. So uh, we're going to use this uni knot and we're going to use two of them. So it's going to be a double uni. And so I'm going to have the black here um, represent the braid and the mono here uh, represented by the yellow. And so it doesn't matter which you start with, but I'll start with the mono. And I just pull enough of the braid back about eight, ten inches. I take the mono line like this, and I'm just going to make a single loop like that over the top, just like I'd done before. And now I keep both my fingers in here to keep the loop open, and I'm just going to wrap about four times. Two, three, four. I'll go one more. Five, okay? Now, what I want to do is I want to pull on the tag end of the mono, and also on the other end of the mono. And so I'll just pull those two very nicely through. You want to wet this with saliva if you can. But if you notice, that knot just comes right together, just like that. All right. Now what I want to do is I want to flip things around. So I'm going to take it, and I'm going to bring the tag end of the braided line. And this is the main part of the mono line. And now what I want to do is I want to, again, make that loop. All right. Put my fingers in here to keep it open. Right like that. And you, you want to go around both of these lines, both the mono and the braided line. Okay, so let's do that right here. And I'll do that about four times. Five times, two, three, four, five. Now, same thing. I want to grab the tag end of the braid, and I want to grab the main line of the braid. And I'll just pull that down through. Again, we want to wet these. All right, so now that's what we have. We have that knot right there. All right, so now I just need to grab both of the main lines right here like this. And now I'm going to, as I pull, all right, you will notice that these two knots will come back down and butt against each other. And once they are together, pull them tight. I pull the tag ends tight as well. I like to do that. Pull the tag ends, pull the main lines. All right. We can then take and snip these off. I'll just cut this right here. And I'll take the braid and we'll cut that. All right. And that's what you have, a nice handshake type knot. Uh, it's extremely strong. I've caught stripers over 38 pounds with this knot. 
never had an issue, never had one slip, never had one break. Uh, I have had other ones that I tied like an Albright knot um, slip on me. And uh, so I've gone to the uni, the uni knot like this and it has really uh, served me well. So hope that helps when you, you're, you're, you know. Now where would you use this? Well, you know, if you're running bra braided line, I like to run like maybe 10 feet uh, of mono or fluorocarbon on the end of that. Uh, that gives me low stretch. Uh, good hook setting ability, and <clears throat> but it, it gives clarity in the water for the fish not to be able to see the, the fluorocarbon or the mono. And so it's a good way of doing it um, when you want to connect the braid over here to the mono over here. Okay, now what I want to show you is called the non-slip loop. And it's a different way to attach your main line to your hook. And the reason you do this is because Having a loop here, as opposed to tying it directly to your, your hook, will help the action. And I'll show you that in a minute. So to start, you want to take your mono, all right? And again, this is the fly line backing to, to let you see it. But I'm just doing an overhand knot. And I'm going to bring that overhand knot up about 8 inches or so, right like that. But I'm not going to close it up all the way, all right? Now what I want to do is I want to take this in, go through the eye. And I want to go back through the knot like that, okay? And now I'm going to just hold on to the hook. And the other two lines I'm going to pull. And you can see that that's going to tighten right on there, right like that. And I want that good and tight. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the line. Now, I always like to work with the hook in my left hand when I'm doing a uni knot. It's just because I'm right-handed, I guess. So now that that knot is there, what I want to do is I want to just loop this up and come across. And when I go through both those lines and in and out of the loop, just like that, all right? So we'll do that. And I want to bring it down as tight as I can to the hook eye, all right? Because I want to make this loop as small as I can, all right? And again, if you're dealing with heavier mono, then you know you don't need to go as many wraps. All right, so we'll just leave that in about there. Okay, so that's what it looks like. So now what I want to do is I want to pull, I want to pull this line, but I want to work it down. Okay, I want this. Okay, so there's the uni knot. Now, as I pull this, this knot on here is going to come back up. You can see it, watch. There. See how it just came back up? So now we're going to cut the tag end off. Right like that. And now you have the non-slip loop. That loop will not slip down and cinch you up. Um, but what's nice about it, as I said before, if you tie the line directly to the eye, say this was a fly or a crankbait, that you you slow the action down by doing that because every time the lure ha wants to work it has to bend the line with it like this so this way the line can be stay staying straight as you're pulling it along and it has all the action it can move wherever it needs to uh, around that loop so this is a non-slip loop and uh, I think it's going to come in handy for you so guys I hope that was helpful to you today I hope you got something out of it you know, there's the uni knot, one knot, but for four different applications. And you know, maybe you've got another application where you use it that I haven't come up with. And if you did, I really encourage you to put it in the comments below. I'd love to learn it, and I'd love, I'm sure everybody else here would love to learn about it as well. You know, when it comes to knots, it's really all about trust. There's, there's not many knots that I am willing to use, especially when I'm going after big game fish, like stripers, bluefish, or other things. You know, I want a knot that I can put my confidence in and trust. And you know, so many of us, we can tie a knot, put it on there, and everything's good. But, you know, when we lose a fish, um, our trust just goes down the drain. You know, a lot of us put our trust in a lot of different things, only to have them disappoint. And so many of us, we put our trust 
in ourselves to get to heaven. We put our trust in other gods to get to heaven. We put our trust in other things and other religions and all these, these different scenarios to get to heaven. But in reality, there's only one that we can trust, and that's Jesus Christ. Why is that? Well, Jesus said, I'm the way and I'm the truth and I'm the life, and nobody comes to the Father but through me. You see, everything else that you and I might try, everything else that you and I might put our faith in is going to fail us when it comes to eternity. You know, for many of us, we think ourselves as good people, but in reality, we're not. If we put our lives against the Ten Commandments about shall not steal, shall not lie, I mean, we've done those things. And the fact that it is sin is something God takes very, very seriously. We, we look at it as, a, as like a game sometimes. That, you know, well, when I get to heaven, you know, God's going to weigh all my good things against all my bad things. And if my good outweighs my bad, well, then he's going to let me in. But I don't know where that came from, but that's a lie. And it's, it's not the truth. It's not what, the, what Jesus has taught. It's not what the Bible's taught. The fact of it is that you and I can't get to heaven on our own. That because of the sin in our life, we've been separated from God. Our relationship with God is in shambles. And, and the fact of it is, it doesn't take much sin to do that. Only one. Picture yourself in a relationship. You know, how many times would you have to cheat on your wife or girlfriend or boyfriend in order for you to destroy that relationship? Just once, right? Well, so it is with sin. And the fact of it is, there needs to be forgiveness in order for that relationship to be restored. There needs to be forgiveness in order for you and I to get back into a right relationship with God. Well, the fact of it is, God can forgive us through what Jesus Christ has done on the cross. You see, it's almost like we were in a courtroom and you and I were found guilty. But the judge himself in order to be a righteous judge, would have to sentence us to a penalty. But suppose that judge himself said, you know what, if you're willing, I can pardon you because I'm willing to take your penalty. And have that judge go to jail or have that judge be executed for you and for me. Well, that's what Jesus did on the cross. He accepted our penalty for our sin so that you and I might be forgiven have the opportunity to go before God, to repent of our sins, to ask for forgiveness, to accept the work that Jesus did on the cross and trust him from this point moving forward. When we do that, God allows our spirit to be born again. He allows our life to be changed from the inside out. He gives us a new spirit, a new heart. He transforms us into the type of people he wants us to be. So. It's really important what you put your trust in. You know, it's one thing to put our trust in a knot. You know, if we lose a fish, it's not the the end of the world. But to put our trust in something that all eternity hinges on, that's gonna be false and bring us short of spending eternity with God. Not only that, placing us in an opportunity to spend eternity in hell. Well then, I think we need to get that right. And the only way I know that that can be done is by trusting and putting our faith in Jesus Christ. By going before him with a sorrowful heart, repenting of our sins, accepting what he did on the cross and making him Lord and Savior and walking in him. Now, you know, if you're not sure how to do that, it's really not that hard. I'd love to share with you my book. It's free. It's only about 16 pages. It's called Growing Deep. It's in the description below. All you need to do is click on it. It doesn't require your email or anything else to capture. But it'll walk with you, you through a little bit about my life, but more importantly about the scriptures and how you can come to know Jesus Christ on a personal basis. How you can have your sins forgiven, be brought back into a right relationship with God, and walk with Him on a daily basis. And so, how you can put your trust in the thing that really matters. So guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us today. Thanks for taking the time to listen through everything, including this message, because you know more important than learning about knots is learning about where we'll spend eternity. And so thanks so much for taking time to hang out with us. You know, please always remember, always, always, that God loves you more than you could ever know. He really does. So until the next time, make sure you get outdoors and God bless.